Okay, gang. I think you can probably hear that. This is my wife's 2007 Honda Odyssey. And something's chirping pretty bad. That's very irritating. I'm going to take a look at it. I'm, I'm going to assume that it's either the idler pulley or the tensioner. But it could be the power steering. But I'm going to find out. But, uh... Yeah, that's, that's unpleasant. One thing I did notice right off, and I know it's hard to see down in this tight gap, um, but the idler pulley, I uh, can't quite get a good angle on it, but you can see the belt. I'll try to zoom in. You can see the belt. That's the grooves on the belt right there. The pulley is just behind that. And what I noticed is, you maybe just, just see it when I'm shining my light, is there's a wear pattern on that pulley, but the belt is riding towards the front of the pulley. See, see that there? Normally, the belt would be further back in. And I don't know if that's a sign that the bearing is going or has gone, and now the belt is walking to the front edge of the pulley. I'm thinking that's probably the problem and that is the idler pulley. So um, I'm going to get the belt off and get a look at it. Well this may be a little more work than I had anticipated. Um, I looked up the picture on Advanced Auto Parts and this assembly, as you can see I've taken the wheel off and the fender liner, the assembly is actually that top pulley and this middle pulley on this big aluminum bracket and it has this hydraulic tensioner. Now that all comes as an assembly. Um, I don't know that I need the whole thing but either way I gotta take it all out so I can verify. From what I can see there's a bolt right there that is the pivot point for the assembly. So I'm pretty confident that bolt has to come out there's a bolt, or not a, really a bolt, but a bolt head. You can see there. And I, and there's another one up above. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm trying to get the light on it. Um, and I, I tried putting a socket on there and rotating the assembly, and I didn't have very good luck with it. So, I'm going to take this bolt out right there and relieve tension and see if I can't pivot the assembly after loosening up that that bolt. We'll see what happens. Okay, just a heads up on this. Um, the little bolt here on this shock thing was 12, 12 millimeters and then that bolt up there on the center pivot point I guess was 17 millimeters. Now I don't know who put this on or who, so I think somebody worked on it before obviously because this thing has over 200,000 miles on it, so I don't know who worked on it, but I had to use my 3-8 breaker bar and my, I don't know, 18-inch teeter pipe to break that loose. So just a heads up on that. And uh, also if you are not careful and you're backing that bolt out off the pulley with a socket, you're going to run out of room. So, I've got one of these, I call them floppies, ratchet wrench, and I'm going to put it on there and work it the rest of the way out. So, I'll get that apart and we'll go from there. Okay, well that came apart fairly easy. Um, when I removed the 12, mm, 12 millimeter bolt from here, this sprung, so I know that there's still tension on that shock device or the tensioning device um, and in the advanced website it shows this entire assembly for about hundred and twenty dollars I may do the whole thing but I'm not sure um, I wanted to show you this this part comes right off and of course there's a bolt in there that this part will come off from what I can hear this this one still sounds good but again I've got two hundred thousand miles on this this one, hear that? And there's play in it. 
So I'm going to blame this one right here as being the problem. But I'm going to see what I can find. I'm going to go to the store and uh, see if they sell these individually. And if they do, I'm going to just do individual parts. And I think that will fix it. Alright, so I picked up the tensioner assembly. And I also got a serpentine belt. Um, even though my belt was in good shape. I'm going to replace it because while I'm in there, it's it's worth it to get it all done in one, one shot and, and know that I have a good belt. Um, here's some numbers for you. The top one is the belt assembly. The second one is the serpentine belt. And basically what I paid. But uh, don't mind the bottom one. That's some transmission fluid I bought for, the, for a 79 Firebird that I just picked up. Um, that said take this out of the box and it's got this little star washer thing and that should be there to hold that bolt in that may be just there for shipping but uh, I don't think it would hurt to leave that on there and what I'll end up doing is installing this of course I'll put this bolt in first and I'll rotate the assembly to get this bolt in and um, I don't want to make this tight yet I'll make it snug because when I go to put, I need to put the belt on uh, before I tighten this bolt completely. That way I can still pivot the assembly. And then I'll use one of these two simulated bolts uh, to rotate it and get the belt in place and let it come back. Once it's settled out, then I'll make sure that's good and tight. Well, gang. I've got the belt up in place, following the pattern, you know, how the serpentine belts go all over the place. And things just got mm, a little bit more interesting. Um, I was working on moving this around to try to get the, uh, the uh, shock tensioner thing, there it is, in place. And <laughs> you're not going to believe this. Look at this. That may have been what my real squeak was, but, oh my, yeah, that's, that's just, just sitting there. I'm really shocked at that. I've never seen that before. So, yeah, that escalated quickly. I'm not going to worry so much about the uh, tensioner right at this moment. I'm going to have to go find a balancer, apparently. Yay! Well, my impact won't break that loose. Um, so I had to come up with something else. I did go to Advance and picked up a new balancer. Um, I think it was $129. And the nice guys that they are, they didn't have the rental tool that I needed. So they directed me to O'Reilly's. And here they have it. Ever tough. 67101 and that's that's the tool I guess you'd call it an exterior hex or something so that's gonna fit inside of that recess there and then I can put a bar through that hole hold it in place and put a secondary breaker bar on the bolt itself. So, just some information for you. Okay, now that was a bit of a surprise. Hooked up the tool, like it said, and I've got it propped against the, uh, well in this case the axle, and then I put some extensions on so I could get outside of the body. I used my long, uh, ratchet with a pivot on it and then I added I don't know three feet of pipe and with my 180 pounds on the end of that thing I thought I was gonna snap in an extension or break the socket but the bolt came loose that took some effort as you can see I got a jack stand underneath that to support it and um, I need to research this torque because unless it just gets tighter over time, um, 
the the uh, reference at O'Reilly said that it was only 47 foot pounds, which that's not a whole lot. But it is loose, and I'll finish taking that off. And I may have to use a three jaw puller. I'm not sure yet. I'll let you know when I get there. That worked out well. I just wiggled it, and it came right off. Uh, it does have a keyway, as you can see, both of them. And the new one comes with a new key. I think the old one is probably okay, and I'm going to try to reuse it. And uh, just see if the new one will slip over. If it does, put the bolt back in, and I'll be done with this part of it. Okay, this took a little bit of thinking and some effort. The tensioner assembly has to be bolted on, even though it's I'm not fully tight. It's bolted in place. I ended up taking... I don't know, about a two foot crowbar, hooking it behind that pivot point and using my uh, new crank pulley as an anchor. And I compressed. You can see it moving. And I had to go a long way, but that's it worked. Rotated everything, you know, compressed the, the little shock thing there. And then I slipped the, the uh, uh, belt around the crank pulley because it's right there next to it. So I'm going to tighten everything up and then fire it up and see if it's all good. Ah, uh, much better. No more chirpy chirp. There you go. Thanks for watching.